Now, before we actually hop into some spring training games, we do have a trade to go over. I realized after I simmed a couple spring training games that we still had Tyler Austin on our roster, and I really didn't have any plans for him, so I decided to ship him off to the Toronto Blue Jays in return for Jordan Groshans. I really didn't have any plans for Tyler Austin. He's a 29-year-old, 73 overall, first baseman slash corner outfielder. He can obviously hit against left-handed pitching. I don't personally want him on my roster, so I decided to trade him and just free up a spot and get a prospect. And that is Jordan Groshans, who is a guy who is be potential, but he's not the greatest prospect. And he's also on the Blue Jays, where they have multiple people in front of him in the organization at third base. And the Blue Jays' current first baseman at the Major League level is Rowdy Telez, who is a guy who can mash against righties, but he can't hit against lefties, while Tyler Austin is the complete opposite of that. So as a corresponding roster move, we needed a third catcher to be on our 40-man roster just in case someone gets hurt, so Chase Numata, who was signed in the offseason, will be added to our 40-man roster and called up for spring training. Now we hop into some spring training games as the San Francisco Giants are taking on the Kansas City Royals. Royals sending out the lefty Eric Skoglin, who had an abysmal 2020 season, 0-9 record, a 6 ERA. He'll be opposing Sean Jelly, the 6'11 right-hander from the University of Kentucky. And take a look at the Giants lineup 1-9, as well as the Royals lineup 1-9. Start things off top half of the first inning. Billy Hamilton leading off the game gets a pitch out over the plate, and he's going to poke this the other way, and it's just going to keep Carrying, scrapes the fence in left field for a solo shot, a rare power surge from the speedy Billy Hamilton, and the Royals take a 1-0 lead. Next batter up was Jorge Bonifacio, who goes down on the drop third strike, toss over to first, completes the out. After that, it brings up Whit Merrifield, who finds a hole on the left side of the infield for a base knock. So the speedy Merrifield's on first base, brings up the slugging first baseman Ryan O'Hearn, who chops one through the right side of the infield, and it's going to be first and second for the Royals with one out. Brings up Jonas Cespedes, their offseason acquisition, goes down swinging on the two-seamer, rising inside on him, and then with two outs... Salvador Perez hits a ball up the middle. Stort Fairchild throws into the cutoff man, but the run does come in. 2-0 Royals lead. Hunter Dozier would then draw himself a walk to load the bases. So bases juiced for Van Meter, the shortstop, and he's going to go down swinging on the curveball. Three strikeouts in the inning for Sean Jelly, but also two runs allowed. Bottom half of the first inning, Aaron Altair with one out is going to loop a ball into right field for a single. So he's on first base, brings up Hector Elliot Ramos after that, and he's going to hit a ball to deep right center field. Looks like it's going to get into the gap, but Billy Hamilton uses his speed to get to it, and Altair is going to be caught on the base paths because he thought it was in the gap and started running to third, and he gets tagged up. So now top of the second. Bit of a better inning for Sean Jelly, as he gets Skoglin, a pitcher, to ground at a shortstop. After that, Billy Hamilton shops one over to first. Fuentes flips to the covering Jelly, tags the bag. And then for the third out of the inning, Bonifacio would fly out to right field as Ramos is there to put it away. On to the top of the fourth now. Alex Meyer on the hill for the Giants now. He gives up a double here to Salvador Perez, the opposing catcher. All of his non-existent speed gets himself into those into that second bag, and then after that it brings up Van Meter who draws himself a walk, so first and second, Skoglin then lays down a bunt. Noisy throws a second with it, so it's runners on the corners with two out for Billy Hamilton who's going to go into right center field. It is cut off by Fairchild, but a run does come in to score. 3-0 Royals is the lead. Top of the fifth, Josh James comes on for the Giants with one out. He's going to strike out the, the second batter he faces in Ryan O'Hearn. And then another slugger in Jonas Cespedes comes up. He goes down on a fastball as well. Josh James looking impressive as he continues that in the top of the sixth inning. Salvador Perez up and in fastball, the two-seamer. Hunter Dozier up fastball, the four-seamer. And then for the third out of the inning, or for the third out of the inning after allowing a walk, it would be Michael Gigliotti to go down looking. Drew Storen came on for the Royals in the bottom half of the seventh. And Elliot Ramos hits a ball down the left field line. Dozier knocks it down on the dive, but he would not have a play at first. Brings up Peter Mooney with a runner on first. He's going to chop a ball over to first base. And O'Hearn fields, but he has no play at first. So Mooney has an infield single. So it's first and second for Jock Peterson, who comes on to pinch hit. Gives a ball a ride to left center field, but it's going to be caught in that gap. 
as the inning comes to an end, and there will be really nothing else going on from this game as the Royals win this one pretty easily, 3-0 over the Giants here in this spring training game. Sean Jelly with a shaky first inning where he gave up two runs, but he also struck out three that inning. But then he had a much better second inning of work, and that was the only innings of work he pitched on the day. Move on to another game where the Giants are taking on the Texas Rangers, who are sending out their ace, who had a very good 2020, and Mike Miner, and he's getting off to a very good start here in spring 2021. He'll be taking on a lefty of the Giants in the lefty from Barnegat, New Jersey, Jay Groom. San Francisco Giants lineup 1-9, as well as the Rangers lineup 1-9. We'll start things off bottom of the second. Isaiah kiner Falefa at the plate, hits the ball into right center field, also known as Falafel, is going to hit that ball into the gap. That's an easy two bagger for him and then brings up Willie Calhoun who's going to chop a ball basically where Numata is and he cannot make the play so it's going to be an infield single so first and second nobody at Patrick uses his wisdom to get that ball onto his foot so he's hit by a pitch base is juiced now for Joey Gat or for Nomar Mazzara as he hits a ball a line drive over to left field they do not test the arm of the left fielder so then with one out it would be a ground ball up the middle. Avellino makes the play, steps in the bag, jump throw to first, and he completes the double play to end the inning and get out of the jam. Top of the third now, Avellino at the plate now, and he's going to hit a ball in the right field that Nomar Mazzara cannot handle, and Avellino's got some fleet feet, so he's in second base with a double. After that, it brings up Stuart Fairchild, hits a ball up the gut, and that's going to drive in Avellino from second base, an RBI single for Fairchild, and the Giants strike first. Bottom half of the third now, Chase Darno is going to hit a ball into right field for a base knock. After that, it brings up Elvis Andrews, who's going to hit a ball into the left side of the infield, into the outfield for a base knock. So back-to-back -back singles, brings up Joey Gallo, goes down looking on the curveball, down and in, could not pull the trigger. After that, it brings up Falafel, who yet again is going to hit a ball in the right center field gap. That'll clear the bases. A two-RBI double for Falafel, and now a... Three or a 2 1 lead for the Rangers. Groom would get out of the beginning though as he struck out Calhoun. And then we move things on to the top of the fifth where Adbert Alzelay, who came over in the Cubs trade where they got Rubnet Odor, would come on. He'll be facing the catcher in his mustache, Chase Numata. Swings the first pitch he sees. That's going to be a base knock for him. So he's on first base, brings up Stuart Fairchild, who drove in the only run for the Giants on the day, and he's going gapping here. That's going to get up against the wall. Runner will score from first base in Numata as Fairchild is going to go all the way into third with an RBI triple, ties this game up at two. We will not be having any more runs in the inning as Edmundo Sosa would pop one up into left field, not being able to get in Fairchild from third. So it's a 2-2 game. Felix Pena comes on for the bottom of the fifth. Elvis Andrews at the dish, hits a ball up the middle. Avellino cannot make the play, botches it, so Andrews is on first base, but then Joey Gallo would immediately grant into an inning-ending 5-4-3 double play. On to the top of the eighth now, where the former shortstop Mash Matt Bush comes on for the Rangers, and with two outs... The Giants get some hitting together as Altair goes into right field. After that, it's Ramos who is going to hit a ball into left field. So back-to-back -back singles for the Giants. So first and second for Seth Beer as he's going to connect on a pitch, hits it into the left center field gap, and he is going gapping. A two RBI double for Seth Beer, and that is going to be a 4-2 lead for the Giants thanks to the bat of the first baseman. So Trevor Gott came on trying to hold that lead in the bottom half of the eighth. He would not be able to do it, however, as he walks Elvis Andrews, and then after that it's Joey Gallo who gets a pitch up and in that he does not miss absolutely launches it over the sign in right center field a long home run for the las vegas native hits a four hits a two-run shot ties this game up at four then the cold play guy chris martin comes on in the ninth inning he'll be facing the pinch hitting jock peterson with two outs who fights a ball off up and in and it's gonna bloop in to left center field for a base knock or basically center field for a base knock brings up ryan schimpf who would be pinch hitting and the Giants have their own version of Joey Gallo, and he's going to give their team a lead. Launches a ball into right field. That's going to carry over the fence a two-run shot of his own, and the Giants are back on top. It's now a 6-4 to four lead, and that would pretty much be the ball game as the Giants win this one 6-4. to four. 
here over the Texas Rangers. Thanks to two individual hits from Stuart Fairchild that drove in runs, a two RBI double from Seth Beer, and of course the two run shot by Ryan Schimpf to take the lead in the ninth. Now on to the third and final game of the episode as the Giants are taking on the Chicago White Sox who are sending out the right-hander Alec Hansen. This will be his fourth start of spring training and he'll be facing Braylon Marquez, the young lefty who came over in the Cubs trade where Brandon Beachy went to the Cubs last trade deadline. Giants line up 1-9 and then of course the White Sox line up 1-9. We'll start things off bottom half of the first with Marquez on the hill. Eloy Jimenez is going to start things off by going down on an up and in fastball. After that, it brings up Marwin Gonzalez, who draws himself a walk. He'll take his base, so with one out runner on first, Wellington Castillo bloops the ball just barely over the glove of Seth Beer at first base. So it's first and second, one out. Brings up Daniel Palka, who goes down on the big curveball. So it's two down now, runners on first and second. Brings up Moncada, who's going to go into right field for a base knock. They do not test the arm of Ramos in right, as it's still bases juice now for two outs. As it's going to be Nicky Delmonico hitting a line drive. Ramos catches that one, and we're still scoreless. Top of the second, and the bats have come alive. Gilberto Fuentes with a long home run for the Giants to start things off. A 1-0 lead on the solo shot from Fuentes. Now, later on in the inning, Joey Bart would hit a ball into right field for a base knock, so that's a single for him. After that, Shane Peterson jumping on the first pitch, hitting a ball similar to Gilberto Fuentes, a long way into right field. The man, the veteran minor leaguer signed in the offseason, former, former Dodger farmhand he was last season, as it's now a 3-0 lead. Peter Mooney is going to get in on the hit parade as he hits the ball into left center field for a base knock. He would go and swipe second base, dives all of his 5'6 frame into the bag. And then Edmundo Sosa, of all people, is going to get a base knock here and drive in Mooney from second base as they get into the cutoff. Man, probably had a play at the plate, but decided not to throw home for whatever reason. Bottom of the second now as Aloy Jimenez is going to hit the ball a long way into left center field. I don't even know where that landed. A long home run for Aloy Jimenez, and it's now a 4-2 game. Bottom of the third now, Daniel Palka also is going to join the home run parade, as this one's going to go to dead center, basically dead center, more right center, for a solo shot, and it's now a 4-3 game, as Marquez could not keep the ball in the park. On to the top of the fourth now, where the Giants' bats are back at it. Joey Bart is going gapping. That's going to be an easy two-bagger for the catcher from Georgia Tech. So he's on second base. Shane Peterson is then going to poke one past the diving glove of Moncada at second base. So it's first and set, first and third now for Peter Mooney, who's going to bloop a ball into left field for a single. That'll score the runner from third. Giants now have a 5-3 lead. Aaron Altair now at the plate goes up the gut. That's going to be a base knock. They do not send the runner, so it's going to be bases juiced. That would be it for Hansen's day. Lucas Giolito comes on facing Jock Peterson, and he's going to hit a ball up the gut as well. That'll drive in two runs, though, as it'll be a 7-3 lead for the Giants. Runners on the corners now for Seth Beer, and you know what they say, Beer will never break your heart as he hits a ball a long way into right field. A three-run shot for Seth Beer, and the... Giants bust this one wide open by a score of 10 to 3 here in the fourth inning. Move things on to the fifth where Sean Jelly came on for a relief appearance. And he would get Wellington Castillo locked up on a curveball for the second out. And then for the third out, he would get Polka to go swinging on a back foot slider for his second strikeout of his appearance. And then we get a third strikeout when he locks up Moncada on the outside half with a curveball. Josh James comes on to continue his dominant spring training. In the bottom of the ninth, he strikes out Robert for the first out. And then for the third out, he would strike out Gittens as he gets the close, not the save, because it is a 10-4 game as the Giants easily win this one as the bats explode, and now they're going to be heading into the regular season. Now, before we actually do end the episode, I do want to go over who had good springs and whatnot, and who actually made the opening day 25-man roster. So, as far as the hitters with good springs, you got Seth Beer, Tetsudo Yamada, Stuart Fairchild, Chase Numata, and Ryan Schimpf. As far as guys who had okay springs, you've got Joey Bart. He'll still make the team as the backup catcher. 
Gilberto Fuentes will be the main pinch hitter, plus he'll get plenty of time at first base. And then, heck, Elliot Ramos will be getting plenty of time in right field, as well as the fourth outfielder against right-handed pitching, which I will get into a bit later on. As far as who had a bad spring, Buster Posey did a 543 OPS in spring training. I don't know how much weight we're going to put into that, but it is definitely concerning to see that he did not really hit at all in spring training. And as far as the pitching side of things, you had Sean Anderson, who had a good spring. Reyes Maranza was flat out filthy. Carter Capps had an incredible FIP. TJ Trejo did his thing. And then Josh James is also pretty darn impressive coming out of the pen. As for the guys who were competing for that fifth starter spot, you had Jay Groom, you had Braylon Marquez, and you had Sean Jelly, who is ultimately going to be the one who gets the opening day roster spot. He is the fifth starter in rotation. And then there was Alex Meyer, who had a bad spring, and I did not want to sacrifice someone else's bullpen spot to keep him around. He was our Rule 5 draft pick, so I decided to just release him slash send him back to the Angels if they want him. So Alex Meyer will not be a part of our team in the 2021 season. We have plenty enough bullpen depth that are around the same overall that he is. So actually taking a look at the rotation and whatnot, in the rotation you've got Sean Jelly of course who gets that fifth spot in the bullpen, you've got Felix Pena and Tyler Lyons as new additions to that group. Lineup versus right-handed pitching, you've got Jack Peterson hitting fourth, Yamada's in the two-hole this year instead of Buster Posey, and you got Seth Beer hitting sixth and playing first base, and then on the bench you got Gilberto Fuentes as the first bat off the bench. Uh, Elliot Ramos is the fourth outfielder, and then Bart is the backup catcher. While the lineup against left-handed pitching, you've got Bart catching, Posey playing first, while Ramos is in right field. And on the bench, you got Stuart Fairchild, who will be getting plenty of time against left-handed pitching because he hits it quite well. And then, of course, he also had a pretty good spring, which obviously isn't the biggest indicator of if a guy is good or not. Plus, it wasn't the biggest sample size, but it is worth giving him a shot in our Major League roster. As you're seeing the... 25-man roster scroll by your screen right now that is going to wrap things up for this episode the next episode you will see will be opening day against the phillies plus two other games so with that being said that's going to wrap things up i've been your host jersey born and i am saying you're going to tell me beast coast and denzel curry are going to drop albums on back-to-back -back weekends and i'm not supposed to lose my mind